so now we're going to go a little bit more advanced here uh, with our uh, trim paths. And let me, let me click on this. I've created something with little squiggly lines, something called zigzag. And I have multiple, believe it or not, each one of these is a composition. And I made a new composition and then brought all three in. I actually made one, made copies, duplicate copies of it. Because they're separated when I make copies of it, I can go into each one and change the color. And, and then I've made a, a composition, which again, this was a timeline. And I bought, brought the three other compositions of each of the squiggly lines into the main composition. So we're kind of like nesting a composition inside a composition. All right? And we're using something. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just kind of show you how to do this. So, all right. So um, let me pause that. Um, let me make a new uh, project. And um, I'll save the one I made. And I'm going to make a new composition and call it uh, Zig. Okay. And it's going to make little ziggly, zig lines, zigzag lines. So again, I'm going to use HGTV 1080, 29.97, 29 excuse me, 1920 by 1080. Uh, it's going to be 10 seconds long, even though we don't need that. We'll work with the work area. Uh, background color is black, but again, it really means there's no background on it. I'm going to say, okay. Here it is. Here's our, here's our area here. Now I'm going to save my project file. I'm going to go uh, on, a, on a Mac Command S or Control S. Or you can go, and you, what you want to do is, well, I'm not in streaming, but if you were in streaming, you, know, you want to find your Google Drive, find that folder for the class, and then save it in there. All right? And I will just call this zig zigzag okay all right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab we're gonna make a straight line and to make a straight line we're gonna use the pen tool so it's the tool right here okay and I'm gonna click on it and what I want to do is I don't want any fill color so I can uh, click on the word fill and choose the first square, the white square with a red line through it, which means none. That means there's not going to be any, any uh, line. And then, again, the stroke, I'm going to make pretty thick. So I'll make it like 50 pixels, and I can move this up and down with my mouse. All right. And then I can change the color by going here. And uh, I'll keep it yellow. Okay. And again, if, I, if you don't have that, if you have none, you can click on the word stroke, just the word stroke, and choose the second one, which means you have a color. So then I'm going to use my pen tool, and I'm going to click right here. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and click over here. All right. So we have a line. Yay! And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some things. If you remember, because this is a shape thing, I'm going to rename this layer. See where it says shape layer one down here. I can click on this and press the enter key or, or the enter key or return key on a Mac, but enter key, and then just say zig. Okay. And then I can go here and I'm going to add a couple things. And the first thing I'm going to add is a zigzag, if you can see down here, the last thing, the bottom thing. Now, it, it kind of created a little bit of zigzag to it. And I can go under zigzag, and I can change um, the size. So I want to change the size, okay, and make it something like that, like 80, 80, let me boot, let me just do 80. Okay, and then see where it says ridges per segment? Let's keep it, you know, down to, uh, 
maybe 10, 10. I like 10 is good. And then the corners, if it says points down here, I'm going to say smooth. So it kind of rounds it out. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to add. We, we added the zigzag. Okay. Now I'm going to add a trim path. Okay, now I've added again. I've added a zigzag and a trim path. I'm going to go to the trim path and I'm going to set a start and an end. And then we're going to move the start or the end. We're going to set them to the same value and then move them a little bit. So I'm going to set a start and an end. And I, I want them both, I think, to start at zero. Okay. And then I'm going to go down the timeline a little bit, and I'm going to uh, move them up to 100. All right. Now notice you don't have anything. That's what I wanted, believe it or not. Okay, but I have the same values. Uh, Start and end, start at zero, and then start at end, end at 100, if I would get this. That way, if I click this little thing, goes back and forth, it'll put me right on the keyframe. And sometimes you think you're on the keyframe, but you're not. Okay? So again, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the start. I'm going to grab these keyframes right here, and you can do that if you want to highlight on the start area right here. I'm going to move these down a little bit. And the more I move them down, the longer the 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 uh, squiggle is going to be. But I want to move them and I have them both highlighted. So if I move them closer together, it makes a shorter ziggle or zigzag, say <laughs> ziggle. Okay, something like that. All right? And all that all that's doing is if, if, these, if these are closer to each other, then it's a shorter zigzag. Again, if I move this out, it becomes a long zigzag. All right? And I, the effect I want is just so it's, it's small. Like that. Okay? And that's just, you know, again, setting a start and an end keyframe with the same values, right? But I'm taking the start. Once I do that, I'm highlighting the keyframes on the start area. And again, just moving them. And the closer they are, go right here, the smaller the smaller the zigzag. And again, I, I'm just choosing to go kind of something like this. That might be a little bit too big, so let me move this back a little bit. And remember, on, on software, if you make a mistake, you can go Control-Z on a Chromebook or a PC or Command-Z on a Mac. But you can go multiple times. Like if you make a mistake, you can stop what you're doing. You never want to panic. You just stop what you're doing and go Control-Z, and it'll keep going back one at a time before you made a mistake. So again, I want something like that, maybe a little bit bigger. Move this down a little bit here. Let's try that. Yeah, that's good. Okay? So I've got one of these. Now I'm going to move my work area. So it's not hanging around too long. All right. So I've got one of those. Yay. Now what I'm going to do is let me close off all these things here. And notice I have a comp one composition, okay, called Zig. And it's right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to make two copies of this composition. So I'm going to click and I'm going to go Command C. So it's going to copy this. And then I'm going to go Command V a couple times. And now I have Zig 2 and Zig 3. So these are all separate now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Zig 2. I double click it and here's Zig 2. See the title right here? And I'm going to go into Zig 2 and change the color of, of Zig 2. Did 
Did it do it? It should have done it. Maybe I have to. Oh, sorry. Go. All right. I made a mistake here. Let me made a separate little thing. So let me click, click right there and then go. Uh, so what I did was I clicked on the layer and then I go up to stroke and I don't, I don't want to click on the word stroke, just the color and change the color. Okay. So now the colors changed. If I, if I play it. All right. And then I'm going to double click zig three. And again, I'm going to click on the layer of Zig3, and I can move this out so I can see it. And then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna change the color of the stroke, not by clicking on the word stroke, but on the rectangle of the color, and then trying some, okay, so now it's lime green. So now I made one, but I just made copies of the composition, which is the timeline. Now I have three separate timelines, all with a different, the same zigzag idea, but different colors. Now I'm going to make a new composition, and, it's, and it's, I'm going to grab all three of these separate compositions and bring them into one big composition. Okay, so I'm going to say new composition, and I'm going to call it all, three, all, all this, I'll use the number. All three zig zags. Okay. And this is again 1920 by 1080. Okay. And it should always use this once you start using it. 29.97. It's HDTV 1080, 29.97. I'm going to say OK. Now here it is right here. And here's the composition. Notice there's nothing in it, but it's all set to go. And it's called all three zigzags. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab, I can grab and just drag it here, okay, and if I want to look at it, here it is right here, and all I want to do is, here's the composition, and right, notice it stops right there, I'm going to grab my, grab my work area and move it down to about there, actually what I can do is, I don't have to do the work area. Let me let me get rid of that. I'm going to put it back because this is the main composition. But see the see the layer of zig zig here. See this brown kind of tan thing. I can grab the end of it and shorten it. And what that's doing is it's actually taking the timeline of zig and ending it right here. Okay. See how it stops right there, and I can grab it and and change it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Zig2 and bring that in. Okay, and again, what I'm going to do is, now right, right now they're on top of each other. So that's why you can just see the yellow. If I click Zig2, I can move it up. Okay, now you want to click on the layer before you do that. But I'm using my selection tool and moving it up. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to um, take Zig2 and move this area here down to where it kind of stops. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Zig3. Now, again, you're not going to be able to see Zig3 because it's going to be on top of where Zig2 is. Okay. But I'm going to move, I'm going to grab Zig3 and just click right here on the layer and then move it down. But you want to make sure, again, that you click on the layer first. Okay, but if you make a mistake, Control Z is your friend. So again, I'm going to shorten it because I know how long the, uh, the little Ziggy is to get across the screen. All right, now this is cool, but now I'm going to space them out. Maybe something something like that. Let's just try. And then I'm going to shorten my work area. So it, it can only, it's only going to keep playing this area here. So let me, let me see here. You know, something like that. Okay. 
All right. So go ahead and see if you can make that again. We're dealing with kind of nesting uh, compositions within each other. And again, all the composition is is a little timeline. We can we can make a big timeline and bring all these different timelines in it. So um, there you go. See if you can recreate that. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and thanks a lot.